Lay Reg vibes from Kanye. That's why he's the GOAT. The GOAT. <laughs> That's crazy. That was one of our reactions to Kanye West and Ty Dolla Sign's new collaboration album, Vultures One. It was an incredible listening experience with our entire Patreon community. So if you guys want to check out the full live album reaction to Vultures, check the pinned comment and check the link in the description. All you guys got to do is subscribe to the reaction tier on Patreon and you have full access to our entire reaction catalog, including Vultures, Utopia, and more. But Lou, let's get into this, all right? Yes, sir. It's Yeezy season and we finally got this album. How are we? feeling today man listen going into this album i didn't have the highest of expectations just because kanye's form before this looking at the dawn the two singles looking at recent feature verses i wasn't that impressed and i feel like he wasn't putting that much effort into it but that being said we didn't hear any music from the listening party so we went in completely fresh and i was impressed bro this is a very fun album kanye's fucking hilarious throughout this whole album um a lot of highlight moments i don't think every track hits obviously but that being said, I was really impressed. So where do you want to start? What do you want to talk about first? Well, here? I want to say this. I'm so glad that we stayed away from the listening party. Thank you to the entire team at NFR over here for covering um, the rollout on Twitter, IG, and whatever the case may be for me and Lou. Because we wanted to go in with fresh, um, just like fresh expectations, you know? like Fresh nothing, years. Exactly. Nothing too crazy. I didn't want to go in and be like, oh, well, I wish this version would have made it. So I'm happy about that. Not only that, but I'm happy that Kanye and Ty Dolla Sign are having fun on this album, right? Because you go back to, let's say, previous Kanye albums, whether it be Donda, whether it be Ye, Jesus is King, there are a lot more serious albums, right? Especially from a topic matter sort of standpoint. But for this album, Kanye's back in his Kanye mode, man. Like, this feels like an old Kanye album in certain ways because you get him getting very brash. He doesn't really give a fuck. You know, talking about women, talking about his wealth, also getting deep on certain tracks. So what was one of the biggest highlights for you off one the One of album? the biggest highlights has to be Burn, which where it's a song that we get, these late registration vibes, beautiful orchestration, production within it. And Kanye's rapping his ass off. There's so many quotable bars um, from his first verse where he raps, I burned eight billion to take off my chains, um, and so many other quotables. So that was a major highlight for me. Um, something else I want to talk about and address is the fact that a lot of people are going into this expecting Ty Dolla Sign to be a side character, to be just the hook man. But you could you could make the argument that he was the best performer on this album. That's very true. I mean, looking at a song like Beg Forgiveness, the way he strained his vocals, the way that he put his all into all the inflections, that was a song. That gave me chills from beginning to end. I was in total disbelief of how okay. amazing it sounded. Something we were talking about before this album was that, you know, Kanye's hook game hasn't been the strongest as of late, right? So I feel like what Ty Dolla Sign really did well on here too was delivering such sick choruses over the entire album. Loki, not a single weak chorus on the entire track list. So I really enjoyed that. One of my favorite songs on here, Back to Me for sure, bro. We were just bumping it <laughs> yeah. before this video. Um, I, I just, I like the playful Kanye verse, uh, just like the whole... Uh, I, I believe, hold on, I want to try and get this. Yeah, beautiful, naked, big titty women just don't fall out the of the sky, sky you know? know? <laughs> and then boom, <laughs> and then he uses it over and over again. For I, I gotta verse. admit, like, I feel like he went on with it a bit too long, Kanye, but it was hilarious. It made for a fun moment. But the real show stealer was Freddie Gibbs on that song. He had an incredible yeah, he had verse. verse. He went off bringing in new flows, um, sort of having a high pitch end rhyme for certain um, lines towards the end of his performance. He carried the song for me, to be honest, but um, that was a blast of a song. Um, let's talk about Talking, which was a song that was released as a single. You get Northwest giving a little cute verse, and I honestly, like in the context of the album, I think it works out pretty well. I love the second half as well. Um, Ty Dolla Sign getting personal, um, just rapping about um, wanting to provide for his daughter and his family. That was really nice to hear. How did you feel about the production as a whole? Because I liked it. when it comes to Kanye West, that's almost a guarantee. Like you can put oh, all the, your money the, on the table that Kanye yeah, will deliver yeah, yeah. production. It, it was crazy. Example, like the sample flip on Good Don't Die. Um, that's obviously Celine Dion's smash song, I'm Alive. And the way that No Idea and Kanye orchestrated that sample flip was absolutely perfect because it's a lot more of like a smooth tempo sort of song. Uh, it's a lot more euphoric. And I like that the sample flips made sense in certain situations. One of the sample flips I actually didn't like was on Hood Rat, for example. So the whole like Hood Rat interpolation from Runaway and Good Life, um, I believe that was sampled for this. 
And it's just, I guess, a mixing thing at this point because it just bleeds way too much into the vocals itself. So it's not necessarily something I'm too impressed with. A song that actually grew on me was Vultures. Um, this is a song I wasn't too impressed with. That's, that's, a, that's a skipper. Drum. That's a skipper. For Lou, it's a skipper. For me, I'm going to go back to it, especially uh, Bum J's uh, verse for verse one. I really like the way that he starts off the song. It's very braggadocious from everyone on the track itself. It's one of the more like pure hip hop centric songs off of the album and in the context of the listen i do feel like it adds value but what are you looking at when going into this album like what are you taking away from it off of the first listen what are you enjoying what are you not enjoying like take me through that process well you know? like you mentioned i mean hood rat is definitely the worst song on the entire album just because the mixing was awful um i feel like that looped up hood rat hood rat like that was way louder than their vocals and it just remained there for the entirety of the song um, but yeah, apart from that, like there's a lot of bangers. I feel like instead of going for certain stylized tracks, whether it be like getting introspection or whether it be, um, giving you, um, something that's super experimental, they just went for some, a lot of oftentimes like dance club bangers, something like paid, for example, is one of my favorite songs on here. And it's very simple. It's them just sort of getting into this fun carefree mode where they're just spitting and the production is really intense and um really addictive to listen to so that was really huge for me apart from that in terms of like the way i'm going to treat this album probably like a playlist to be honest with you i don't think that it's the most cohesive album ever i don't think that there's really that much connective tissue from song to song and but it's not meant that to be wasn't the intent yeah, but, but that's what i'm saying that's why i'm going to treat it like a playlist because there's songs I enjoy, there's songs I enjoy less. Um, something I want to talk about, though, is Carnival, because that was one of the most hyped-up songs from the listening parties, just because you have Playboy Cardi giving you an extended verse. I also love what they did production-wise, because you had, like, this crowd roaring. It kind of gave you Seven Nation Army type of vibes. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a really fun song. What did you think of that Cardi performance? I loved it. If you go through the first, like the fourth verse, because he has the fourth verse on the song itself, um, it's it's extended lines on this. It's just not him spitting like mumbo jumbo. He's legit spitting, and it's pretty cool because the way that his voice meshes with the vocal sample, because it's very triumphant. It's such a sick feeling going through this song as well. But I want to shout out Rich the Kid as well on this because I feel like he has a really underrated performance on the entire album. And shout out to Rich the Kid. I miss like, getting these types of Rich the Kid verses. And even Kanye had a really cool third verse on this. The way that he came through with it. Uh, but over. Overall, the way that I feel about it off of first listen, I'm impressed with the production. I think it was really well produced. I want to see the way that they're going to progress with the album over the course of the next month. Because obviously, like The Life of Pablo, like Donda, there was changes that were made after the album was released, right? Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully there's some mixing and mastering things that get better. I guess, I guess like because there were certain times where like, it, I believe it was on the last song, King, for example... Voc like Kanye's vocals feel really drowned out. It's almost inaudible at certain points. You really have to pay attention. So those are just certain things that I want to see, let's say, get better with the course of the month. Also, a lot of people are hoping for like new songs to be added on the next Vulture volumes just because there's songs like River featuring Young Thug that people were going crazy over because apparently it was one of the best songs from the listening party. So maybe that could make a future volume series um, within the series. So we'll see what ends up happening there. But um, yeah, man, I I'm feeling pretty good about the album. Like I said, it surpassed the expectations. It was a hell of a listen. Um, and I do think that it was interesting that, you know, Kanye isn't really focused too much on being super lyrical. He's really just sort of being carefree and having fun, letting the good times roll. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. That's um, something that I miss from Kanye. You know, just being able to like sit down and have good vibes for like a car ride, for example, or something to play at a party. Like, there's going to be a ton of replay value in this. And I also feel like the accessibility factor at this album is an all time high for recent Kanye albums. I'm being honest with you, right? Because we were doing the compare and contrast game with this and Donda. And while, yes, Donda has higher highs, this has more of like. There's more consistency within the track list as far as like what got what got left off the cutting board and you know not you maybe only having like two or three skips off the album like it's really nice in that matter where you could take a ton of value out of it. So um any final words, man? Any final words? I mean, talking about the features, I feel like most of them were pretty well calculated, which is always something that you expect out of a Kanye West album. Um that being said, though, there's also some features like Quavo or YG where you're like Okay, these are cool. We could have gone without them. Um, but yeah, overall, 
Um, I'm kind of in between different two different scores for the review. Um, we will be doing an official album review um, within the next couple of days, so stay tuned for that because that's going to be interesting to see really how we grade the album once we really start to analyze it. But um, I'm really impressed, and you know, it's going to be interesting to see how they follow up with this. Like, are they going to be able to sort of match this quality for the next installments? That's a big question mark. So we'll see. But overall, um, production incredible. I love the drum and bass beats. There was one song, I think it was Do It, where you had this like Brazilian funk like bass line that was just hitting so hard. Someone was saying that like the moments. Neymar edits are going to go crazy. Yeah, I that saw beat, that. Yeah, um, yeah. In the live stream. But listen, guys, it was an incredible listening experience with you guys. Thank you to all the Patreon members. And as I said, if you guys want to subscribe to the Patreon plan, check the pinned comment and the link in the description because this is not going to be the first or last time we react to an album. All right. Or, or a Kanye yeah, album I, for 2024. <laughs> listen, we got another two coming in the next two months. So it's going to be a spectacular ride. And listen, 2024 is it's already shaping up to be such a cool year. I mean, new blockbuster albums every single month. I am here for it, ladies and gentlemen. This is why we are here. Guys, subscribe to the Patreon if you have not already. Thank you so much for watching this, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.